Welcome to the first ever Trinity Global Graduate Forum webinar. It's three o'clock here in Dublin. I don't know what time it is where you are, but it's great that you're able to join us. It's almost five months since the Trinity Global Graduate Forum. In another five months, we will publish Trinity's new five-year strategic plan. So now is a good time to tell you about what the college has done since the forum and the kind of actions we're proposing to secure Trinity's future. You'll recall from the forum that we concentrated on five areas. Reputation, including Trinity's identity. The Trinity education, including research, innovation, and our students' learning experiences in clubs and societies. Technology, including online education. Growth, including rising student numbers and capital development projects. And finance including the need for more financial autonomy so we can decide how best to use our financial resources. The feedback we got from many of you after the forum was that you would like to see more quantitative data and indicators relating to these five areas. We're in agreement. Our strategic plan should be based on solid data. So we commissioned two surveys. The first is from international economic consultants, Indicon. We asked them to project growth and other economic trends in Ireland for the next five years, including funding to universities. And the second survey is from Irish market research company, Behaviour and Attitudes. We asked them to look at the perceptions that people in Ireland have about Trinity and about the higher education sector in Ireland in general. This second survey is informing our new identity initiative, which is about creating a consistent visual identity for Trinity, together with a powerful narrative to underpin it. This follows on from your feedback at the forum. Now here is some data from the surveys. Indicon looked uh, at the external economic environment which Trinity will be operating in and made some projections for the next five years. As most of you know, there is room for cautious optimism about Ireland's economy. Here are three GDP projections. The Department of Finance's projection is the blue line, ESRI's is the red line, and Indicon is in green. GDP is projected to grow by between 2 and 2.7% next year. And Indicon puts the cumulative impact uh, 2014 to 2019 at just over 20%. Looking now at employment growth, over the next five years to 2019, numbers in employment are projected to increase by between 11 and 14 percent. This recovery will be accompanied by an increased demand for third level education. Demand in Dublin will be higher than the national average. To meet this, as well as increased growth in international students, Trinity will create 10 percent more undergraduate places. That's about 300 new places annually. At the same time, public funding to universities in Ireland is projected to fall sharply during this period. A decrease in public expenditure will impact on the education sector. Even if the education share remains the same, the overall budget is likely to decrease by around 9% by 2019. Even a marginal decrease in education share of 0.5% results in a decrease of 15% in spend on education by 2019. So, for the period of the next strategic plan, the economy and employment prospects will improve, demand for third level education will go up, but public funding per student will continue to decline. Now let's look at the findings from the Behaviour and Attitude Survey. 1,000 randomly selected adults around the country were asked about their perceptions of Trinity and about higher education in Ireland. Here's what was found. Trinity is the purple bar. Other Irish universities are represented by other colours. As you can see, Trinity is regarded as Ireland's leading university, rich in heritage and tradition with world-class professors. On these indicators, it scores much higher than any other Irish university. However, it is also seen as snobbish, which is not what we want. 
Here are more results. Trinity also does very well on perceptions of graduate employability, entrepreneurship, and innovation. However, it is also seen as less modern. I think the strength of Trinity's heritage has the undesired side effect of making us appear less modern. This is a perception we will have to work to correct if we are to assert our strengths globally. Otherwise, for me, the outstanding outcome from this survey was that 85% of the Irish public want Ireland to have a university in the top 50, and 63% see Trinity as that university. The next contender, UCD, is only at 24%. I take this as a mandate from the general public to raise Trinity's profile worldwide. The Irish public see this as good for Ireland as a whole. This is important because some in the education sector think we should concentrate on getting all Irish higher education institutions roughly to the same level. They don't want one outstripping the others. But it seems that the public disagrees. I'm happy to send the full surveys to anyone who wishes to study them. The findings from these two surveys give us the mandate to create a new strategic plan. This plan will achieve the vision for Trinity as an Irish university of global consequence that delivers for its community and makes a worldwide impact. We will build on the distinctive nature of the Trinity education, blending academic rigor with an active student experience in clubs and societies. We will strengthen Trinity's role as a key player in innovation, helping bring global talent to Ireland to drive sustainable growth. Trinity will act as a connector for Dublin's tech, cultural and scientific enterprises. That's part of the new vision of our strategy for innovation and entrepreneurship. It's a blueprint for Trinity, but even more so for Dublin City and indeed the whole country. Behind this will be a transformation of the financial environment through rebalancing public and private funding streams. Trinity wants to partner with the government and politicians on the understanding that a world-class higher education system is resource intensive. Trinity will need more private funding to meet development needs. The government must take seriously the sustainability of higher education and Trinity's own ambitions to deliver for Ireland on the world stage. At the centre of our new strategy are crucial initiatives to help us achieve our goals. During the forum, you'll recall that I unveiled plans for a Trinity uh, Business School to be co-located with an innovation and entrepreneurship hub. Construction on this 70 million euro project begins this summer. And planning is now underway for a new Engineering, Energy and Environment Institute, which we are calling E3. It's a major engagement between the engineering and natural sciences. E3 will set radical agendas at the place where technology and nature meet. It will ensure that Ireland is in the vanguard internationally in addressing challenges and opportunities for this technological planet. In addition to these major capital projects, we will also be including in the strategy our plans to generate new commercial revenues and better manage our costs. We have recently appointed a new commercial director who will be working on the Trinity Visitor Experience, an initiative to increase revenue from our historic campus, cultural heritage and art collections. In pursuit of creating leaner and more efficient management structures and reducing our reliance on buying in expertise, we have put in place a programme to streamline the college's administrative and support services and so deliver greater value for money. The new systems will be operational by September when we launch the new strategic plan. I don't have time now to go into our other many planned initiatives in research and education. I hope shortly to share with you our exciting plans for a Cancer Institute. To conclude, we are committed to a cohesive strategic plan which will meet the needs of all our community and encapsulate what Trinity stands for and how we wish to develop. This strategy is underpinned by data from the recent surveys and it's informed by some of your expertise and insights. 
Thank you very much for listening and I look forward now to questions. Thank you, Provost, for those opening remarks, which I'm sure will generate some interesting comments and questions from our webinar participants. For those of you who I may not have met during the Trinity Global Graduates Forum, my name is Patrick Gagan, and I'm the Dean of Undergraduate Studies here at Trinity College Dublin. We are now happy to take questions over the next 20 minutes or so, so please email your questions and comments to tggfwebinar at tcd.ie, which you will have seen on your screens. Now, turning to the first question this afternoon, Provost, what do you consider are Trinity's top three priorities for strategic development? Top three priorities for strategic development. Well, first we have to uh, remember and recognize that our mission, our core mission is in education and research. And our strategic priorities must lie around this, improving and developing the curriculum, developing uh, a Trinity education. And that means not just academic activities, but the broader formation of the student uh, in through extracurricular and co-curricular activities. So a Trinity education is strategic priority number one. Number two, research. We must uh, further develop the impact that we're making in our research because in many ways, that's what gives a university uh, an international profile and reputation. And thirdly, underpinning all of this, we must transform the financial environment. At the moment, uh, uh, we might be positioned as a, a high quality but mid-tier nonetheless European university. We want to get to being a university, an Irish university of global consequence that delivers for its communities and makes a worldwide impact. To get there, we're going to have to transform the financial environment through further development of uh, our non-exchequer revenue streams, such as philanthropy, such as uh, our commercial activities and so on, recognising that the, there's going to be no quick turnaround in the Irish public uh, funding situation. Thank you, Provost. Now, what are the key metrics you are using to measure progress in your global relations strategy? The, the key metrics as regards global relations, uh, there are a number. Uh, one important metric uh, at the base level, if you like, is international student recruitment. We uh, have many benefits to the university when we recruit international students, not least increasing the diversity of the student body. That's important for the kind of cosmopolitan educational environment that we so much value in Trinity, but also uh, for the non-exchequer revenue that it generates. Uh, at, an, at another level, we want our students that are here to be involved more in international exchanges, taking semesters abroad and years abroad. And we're measuring the number of our students, the percentage of the total student body that do this and we want to see it increase to one third of the total students by the, the aim at the moment is by 2019, the end of the next strategic planning period. And that will be accompanied of course also by internships and so on of students in, uh, in industry. So students should uh, have an experience of learning outside of the university environment during their undergraduate years. Uh, other, uh, at the highest level we want to engage in joint activities with uh, universities abroad two plus two as we call them. It's a four year degree, you could do two years in abroad and two years of it here. Students from say Beijing and, uh, and Trinity Dublin on, 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 on the same program studying together. We want to get a number of these joint programs up and running. We already have made progress uh, in this with, in Singapore where we have uh, a Singapore activity on a campus there and we want more of that. So those are, are the metrics. Uh, additional to that are metrics relating to engagement with alumni around the world uh, and the follow on from that of course with the alumni participation in funding and so forth. These are our metrics. Very good. Now this is a topical one. The Identity Initiative is generating much press coverage. What is it all about? The Identity Initiative uh, is about uh, improving and strengthening Trinity's uh, reputation. Um, it's a, at one level, a branding initiative. Uh, Trinity's branding and identity is, is kind of uncoordinated and dispersed. Uh, and the, the first thing that we have to do is uh, strengthen the identity with a, a specific logo type. Um, and this is also all, all very important. At the moment, the college and university uh, uh, haven't uh, joined up their identity in some respect. And we, we're going to use the phrase Trinity College, the University of Dublin 
to make it clear to international audiences that don't know it that Trinity College Dublin is a university. So the Identity Initiative is about strengthening Trinity's reputation and how it communicates with uh, those audience, uh, audiences that it needs to communicate with pros prospective students around the world and their parents, industry, alumni, graduates and so on. Very good. Now, how big in terms of numbers of students do you see Trinity growing to? I don't see it growing very extensively. Uh, uh, at the moment, keeping well less than 20,000 students. So uh, uh, about a 10% growth uh, in the next five year period or even less would be appropriate. We're definitely going to grow the number of students that we have in our business school. And also the E3 initiative, Engineering, Energy and the Environment, will expand the number of engineering students and students in the natural sciences that we have. And there may be a few other courses that increase the numbers of students, but we don't envisage a, uh, a very considerable expansion in student numbers. Very good. Well, lots of emails coming in to tggfwebinar at tcd.ie. And this is the next one. As public investment declines, how will you generate private funds to support the academic mission? There are uh, several ways to go about this and that we are going about. One is postgraduate student recruitment. This is important to us. Taught masters, uh, students and PhD students, postgraduate students of all kinds. Because remember, postgraduate students aren't subject to the free fees initiative, so-called, of, of the government, and they write their own checks. So this uh, category of students is, in some senses, uh, generates non-exchequer revenue. The commercial activities are very important, and I mentioned the Trinity visitor experience. This can increase the non-exchequer revenues into the college. Philanthropy will also be very important, um, and we're having some successes in this line, and we will need to continue on that. But fundamentally, we must, I think, look, and, and I will be arguing for, how we unblock the, the mindset that, uh, that says that public funding must fund uh, undergraduate education in Ireland. I believe that the, there should be a tuition fee paid by students who can afford to do so, and that would ultimately transform also the funding and financial situation in Trinity College. Now, many people in the corporate sector believe government should get out of the way when it comes to job creation. Is there a role for government in university policy and funding? Well, we must remember on one side that there is a role for government because uh, higher education, university education is a service provided to, to the public in any country and government has a, uh, some kind of a regulatory role in ensuring that we, we do what we, we say we do. We provide a high quality education and government has a, a regulatory role in that. I believe that uh, it should think seriously about how it's involved in the financing of higher education and that uh, higher education, education in general, is a balance between a public good, a good for society, uh, the society needs more doctors and engineers and, and, and so on, uh, and it's a private good. It benefits the individual in that they have a higher earning capacity. And that we in Ireland have struck the balance wrongly, uh, seeing it as some, a public good that needs to be uh, funded from public, uh, from taxation. We need to, to, to swing the pendulum back to an understanding that both private and public funding from the individuals uh, are necessary for a highly functioning, properly funded higher education system. So I think, should the government get out of it? I think it should get out of regulating the financial environment, but it has a, a, a role, quite rightly, in, um, in, in, in providing the legislative environment, if you like, uh, that, uh, that, that, higher, that universities function in. It does that in all countries around the world, including in the United States and and other countries that have a very strong private uh, university system. Ireland, now in recovery, needs a truly world-class university. How are you reaching out to your graduates, your greatest ambassadors, to help make Trinity that world-class Irish university? Well, how am I reaching out? How are we reaching out in ways like this? Uh, we're visiting many of our alumni around the world, but also many of our alumni are here in Ireland and uh, we are reaching out to them, uh, not only about in issues relating to, to advocating the importance of high quality higher education and recognizing that there's a link between that and how universities are financed, 
but asking them to, uh, you know, to contribute as well and to speak up for the importance of higher education. We realize that our, our alumni are in many ways our, our strongest asset. They understand Trinity. They've been here as students. They understand the value of what we, what we do uh, and uh, it is their support ultimately in advocating for high quality higher education that will get us out of the, the log jam that we're in now about higher education and how it should be funded. So we're reaching out and we want to continue to do that. And uh, um, indeed, I think the TGGF was a good way of uh, beginning a, a formal process uh, and we're going to consider how we can follow up TGGF with continuous measures to do that and to get advice from our alumni as well about how Trinity can, uh, can become this university that we have a vision for. How will you measure progress on revenue generation under the Trinity Visitor Experience? We'll measure it in the amount of euros that we get in from it, frankly. Uh, we have set uh, targets there uh, for income generation on all the various revenue lines from uh, you know, Book of Kells and that uh, library activities to accommodation activities. Rooms in college are uh, rented out over the summer and there's a revenue stream from that, from our catering activities. Uh, all, all of these activities have an income stream and we have set targets on each one and the commercial director will be the person responsible for achieving those targets. Okay, now we're getting lots of questions on Trinity's global reach. What are your top three target markets globally? Our top three target markets globally um, well, uh, this, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of ways of answering this question. I, pre I presume you're meaning territories uh, here uh, rather than categories of student. North America is still our strongest recruitment market uh, and will always be. Uh, United States and Canada are where we get most of our uh, fee-paying non-EU undergraduate students and we're going to continue to prioritize that. In the last uh, three years, we've been pushing hard to break into India and uh, China as the two biggest countries in Asia. In India in particular, we're speaking directly to high schools of the, of the standing where the, 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 the pupils going to them can afford to pay for a, a Trinity education. And in China, we're doing that in the big uh, tier one cities in China. And we're going to keep doing that as, the, as our two target markets. We have to be ready, though, for uh, um, occasionally governments around the world funding uh, students. And like, for example, Brazil this year, this, uh, last year, decided that it was going to fund students to study abroad, the st their, their study abroad program. We were ready uh, to, to go and chase that market when the funding uh, became available within it. Other countries do this as well. Kazakhstan is another such country where we have a large number of students and you might not think it. And that's because we were ready to recruit students from that market when the funding within it became available. So it's a, um, it's a matter of those three big markets that I said, but also being ready to react to opportunities that exist uh, no matter what country or territory they're from. Okay, now how important is Science Gallery, particularly in terms of its global reach? The Science Gallery is very important to us, uh, as you can imagine, and um, we have uh, succeeded here in demonstrating within Ireland the sort of uh, outreach activity in science that can uh, spur on young people to study the subject at, at university. Of course, uh, compatible with Trinity being Ireland's university on the world stage, we didn't rest on our laurels with that. We decided the next step was to create a Science Gallery network across the world. Uh, and I've just come back from New York where we're having discussions about opening a science gallery uh, in Manhattan. And uh, I've been already to uh, Bangalore, uh, Moscow. I'll travel to uh, Australia in the summer. So this is very important to us. And it's very important in building our, our confidence about the absolute quality of the activities that we have here and the interest that will be had in them globally when we uh, get out and, uh, and tell people about what we're doing and engage them uh, in joining us in our activities. Now, much higher education commentary focuses on the centrality of innovation for economic growth. 
How important is Trinity's urban locale in acting as a hub for the innovation economy in Dublin and the wider area? This is a very good question. And, uh, and the answer is that it's increasingly important. There was a time, I think not so long ago, maybe even only 10 years ago, but certainly 20, 30, 40 years ago, when universities were setting up in the suburbs or on the outskirts of big cities. We're fortunate in Trinity College in that we have a university located in the heart of a capital city, a stone's throw from national institutions, a stone's throw indeed from the centre of government itself. Equally, and indeed perhaps more important, a stone's throw from many of the, uh, the big uh, industrial investments in Ireland in the last number of years, in that some of the big multinationals and foreign direct investment has happened uh, here in the Grand Canal dock area and within the city centre. So Trinity is ideally poised to link with much of this and to uh, be, be a catalyst in spurring on the creation of the companies that inevitably come associated with uh, large multinationals when they locate in a city. And that's not to speak also of our spin-out companies that come from Trinity's research itself. So our city centre location is important for Trinity as a connector and as a... Uh, and by being a connector, being an enabler of a vibrant innovation ecosystem. And I think there's every opportunity, and indeed even more than an opportunity, a responsibility and a duty on Trinity College to, uh, to reach out and um, uh, uh, make that ambition happen because of, 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 of our location. For you as Provost, what were the three most surprising outcomes from the Trinity Global Graduates Forum event in November? The most surprising outcomes? Well, I, I personally, I think, and I, I think many of you agree, it went extremely well as, a, as an event. Uh, and the outcomes for me were the connections that Trinity College made there and then on the spot with some of its uh, top global graduates. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised at that, but I was happily surprised at how, uh, how, how, how immediately uh, many of the global graduates reconnected with the college, many of whom might have spent decades without thinking very much about Trinity, could plug in again and see what we were trying to achieve. So that, that was, a, was a great result. Um, I think the, another a very important result, not to be underestimated, is the injection of adrenaline that it gave to the college community as a whole, myself, the, the leadership, the academics that were involved, to know that uh, you know, we have this network. There are 100 people that will come when invited and give freely of their time and expertise to, to advise Trinity on how to succeed in a global environment. And indeed, maybe I'll say thirdly, I, I was really um, surprised and pleasantly surprised at how far some people came from, from, from many countries around the world to, uh, to, to I suppose, um, share with us the, the, the difficulties that we have and to give us advice on how to, how to, how to move forward. So they, they were important outcomes. And many, I've, I've kept up contact with, you know, on an email basis with maybe one third of those that were there. And I've been on a once-off contact with many others. So this provides a support base for me also, as we think of achieving our vision of making Trinity an Irish University of global consequence that really delivers and is seen to be delivering uh, for its, uh, its stakeholders. With 2016 coming up, marking the centenary of the Rising, does Trinity have plans to commemorate those who died in Dublin? Indeed, uh, we do. Um, uh, we've set up a committee on, a decade, on the decade of commemorations, which goes from 1913, the lockout, right through to the end of the Civil War in uh, 1923. Uh, um, and commemorating the events of that decade appropriately is exactly the space Trinity should be in. It's very important that uh, Trinity, an, an institution with, with such a history as ours, let's face it, essentially in many respects a unionist institution in 1913, uh, made a transition to what we're talking about now, a uni an Irish university uh, really uh, putting its shoulder to the wheel to contribute to the success of Ireland as a country. I mean, this is a fabulous story, and um, uh, we have to be central in telling it. And it, uh, so we will be, we will be um, having activities to commemorate uh, uh, those who died, not just 
in, um, in the 1916 events themselves, but the Great War uh, uh, and uh, subsequent activities, as some, you know, the Civil War and so on. Uh, commemorations might be um, one word to use, but I think it's important that we uh, contribute to a deeper understanding of the significance of those events. And perhaps in many ways, those events haven't been truly uh, properly contextualized for the Ireland that we're living in today. Then that's Trinity's, and Trinity's, not just Trinity's historians, I would say, but all of the Trinity community, including you, the alumni, should think about this. And I'd be very happy to enter into dialogue with anyone who has uh, advice to give on this. Very good. Now we're getting lots of questions on graduate employability. What for you is a work ready graduate? Well, I'll ask the question first, uh, that there's no easy answer to, to this idea of what is a work ready graduate. We are not in a way educating a student simply for the first job. Students come to us, um, of course they want to get a job, the first job, but they want to be educated for a career and more generally educated for a successful and happy life. Now a work ready graduate is for, for us in Trinity and, and the Trinity education is a graduate who can uh, uh, participate ultimately in the success of the company that they go to work for. It doesn't mean necessarily that they, they know how to use the particular computer program that a particular company uses or there are some universities you know who that run courses for you to go and work in Google or run courses for you to go and work in Intel. But I don't think the Googles or the Intels want that. They want or expect indeed that a Trinity education will give a student the, the ability to succeed uh, uh, in that company throughout, uh, um, succeed in, in a, throughout a whole career rather than just hit the ground running, have the skills to hit the ground running and then maybe not know the more general, not have the more general attributes to succeed in lifting that company's operations more generally. So, you know, be careful with the, with the issue of work ready because if, if all we're doing is teaching that, then maybe you're not teaching a more important set of, of life skills as well. Okay, now this is our final question. As a Trinity graduate, I believe we need to be more ambitious about our future. What universities globally should Trinity aspire to be most like? I think we should be ambitious for our future. I am ambitious for Trinity's future. But I know that uh, being a copycat is not the future for Trinity. We can aspire to climb the rankings uh, and be more like many of the top universities in the world. Uh, but we will always have the ambition of being distinctively Trinity at the core of that. So I'm not chasing any one university in the world. I'm looking to create a Trinity that delivers for its stakeholders, its students, its staff, and its wider alumni groups. And with our view on that mission, rather than copying any one particular university, that's how we will achieve the goals for this great university. And I think that sits very much within the tradition that Trinity has always held, uh, a, a tradition of being ready to change, uh, a tradition of being ready to modernize, but a transition very much of thinking for itself. Well, thank you all very much for your participation in what was a very lively interaction. We very much appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us today for this first TGGF webinar. Those questions submitted which have not been answered due to the time constraints will be answered on the TGGF website within a week, so I invite you to visit it at tggf.tcd.ie on the 4th of April. Thank you again and goodbye from Trinity.